It's the nightmare scenario right now, y'all. Like, seriously, if I'd come on this show in 2016 and said, if Trump is elected, you'll find yourself in a world where state Supreme Courts are standing in the way of women with dangerous, non-viable pregnancies, where women are being tried criminally for miscarriages, where the courts are second-guessing the FDA's opinions on contraceptive medicines, you'd have written me off as hysterical. We're in precisely the parade of horribles that feminists have been warning about since Roe was first decided. And not coincidentally, the ones we've so often been told not to worry our pretty little heads over. So yeah, obviously the guys talked about the Texas woman who had to flee the state to terminate her court-ordered pregnancy. We have not yet talked, though, about the 33-year-old woman in Ohio who is now being charged with abusing a corpse because she miscarried a fetus into a toilet. And fetuses are people, and putting dead people in toilets is disrespectful. You'd think I was making a fucking joke if you didn't already know about the case, right? But that's a real thing that happened, and it's a felony. This woman is looking at legitimate jail time because lawmakers and prosecutors in Ohio don't know how miscarriages work. And of course, as we spiral out of control, the Republican dick pimples in charge are just pressing down that accelerator. Just look at new House Speaker and fourth most terrifying person in America, Mike Johnson, who was among the speakers at a recent meeting of the National Association of Christian Lawmakers. We've talked about it on the show already, actually. This is the event where Johnson declared himself to be a new Moses for America's Red Sea moment. Now, that bit of nuttery did catch the attention of national media, which is nice. But far less reported was the fact that basically the whole meeting was a referendum on how to make abortion laws worse. Now, to be clear, Johnson is publicly downplaying the extremist calls for a nationwide abortion ban, and he'll continue to do so, I'm guessing, through mid-September of next year. And once the election is over, assuming he's got a majority of literally anything, we'll suddenly hear a lot more about it. And if you want evidence of that, you can just look at virtually anything he's ever done in his political career, or what he's currently doing, like headlining at anti-abortion Christian nationalism meetings. But of course, when it comes to reproductive rights, the legislature is the second scariest branch of government, and there's a gulf between them and the judiciary, which is why I was terrified to learn that the Supreme Court is looking for more ways to weigh in on abortion. Specifically, they just granted cert to a pair of cases that seek to challenge the legality of mifepristone. The cases basically want to give conservative politicians the power to override the FDA when it comes to, you know, deciding what medicine is safe and how safe it is. And given what we know of this Supreme Court, we have no reason to believe they're not going to give it to them. So yeah, that's the nightmare scenario we're in right now. On the one hand, it's gotten super easy for me to find stories to fill this segment with. On the other hand, literally everything else about it. So with that bleak circumstance echoing in your ears, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Eli. (laughs) 